Today I'll be reading chapter 20 of Rump, the true story of Rumpelstiltskin. Chapter 20 is called Trolls Smell, but they also smell. The trolls and I stood still and silent for a moment, transfixed by the pile of treasures below. The only sound was the soft tinkling of the harp. What is all that? I asked. My words broke the spell. Nothing, they all shouted, and a wall of trolls formed in front of the hole, shuffling me back out of the way. The harp is playing by itself, I said, wide-eyed. No, it isn't. That, that's the wind. The hole is very sensitive to a breeze, said Bork. All the trolls nodded and grunted their agreement. Oh, stop, said Mard. You might as well explain it to him. But... Our secret, said Bork. He is the secret, said Mard. You can smell it all over him. Smell what on me? I was getting tired of them saying I smelled. All I could smell was the rancid reek of the trolls. Magic, said Mard. You smell like magic. Magic? You can smell magic? I asked. It smells sweet, said Bork. But also kind of bitter, like a tart berry. It's hard to describe, but the smell is unmistakable, and it's all over you. Oh, I said, furtively trying to sniff myself to see if I could detect sweetness or bitterness or berries. So that means all that stuff in that hole is... Yes, said Bork. But you can't have it, said Slob. You can't even touch it. We're protecting it. From what? I asked. Humans, said Mard. Nasty, meddlesome creatures. They always cause mischief, no matter what. But with magic, they cause the most mischief of all. Curses, famines, destruction, madness, and death. One of these days, they're going to turn the whole world into a magical mess. All the trolls snorted in agreement. Humans used to make us find it for them, continued Mard. Slaves we were, or our ancestors were, kept on chains and sniffling like dogs to find magic things for humans. So we started making people believe that we ate humans so that they would leave us alone, said Bork. My great-great-great-great-great-grandfather Bork is the troll who is hailed as starting it all. Says you! said Slop. For all we know, it was my great-great-great-great-great-great-grandmother. Bork snorted and continued with the story. Bork the Brave, he was called. One day, as he was sniffing for magic, his master commanded him to eat a magic bean to see what it would do. I bet it was poison like those apples, said Slop. Don't interrupt, said Bork. And he continued. Bork wasn't stupid. Trolls may be able to smell the magic, but we don't use it, and we certainly don't eat it. Well, I suppose something just snapped in Bork that day. He snatched his own master and said he would eat him instead if the master didn't set him free. Legend has it that he actually did bite him, and the master was so terrified he let Bork go. Soon other trolls learned of Bork's successful escape, and they did the same, threatening to eat their masters or their wives and children. One troll even bought his freedom by threatening to eat his master's beloved pet goat. Then all sorts of tales were spread about trolls eating their human masters or their wives and children, and soon the trolls were driven from the kingdom and yonder and beyond and anywhere else near humans. Now, if we ever come across a human, we pretend we're going to eat them, and then we allow them to escape so they can tell everyone how they were nearly eaten by trolls. It keeps them away, all right. But you still look for magic? I asked. Only so we can keep it safe from the humans, said Mard. Oh, I said. The trolls were coming closer to me now. The smell is strong on you, said Slop. Even witches don't smell like that. You reek of magic. Oh, I said again. The trolls all huddled tight around me, sniffing. Would they throw me into their hoard and guard me too? Um, maybe I should go now. I need to travel to yonder to find my family.
stay with us tonight, said Mard. It's too late for travel. Yes, said Slop. And besides, it's dangerous. You can't be too careful. They pulled me back into their campground like a lost pet. When it was time to sleep, I learned that the trolls didn't have houses or sleep under any kind of covering. I asked them what they did in the rain and snow. Slop looked at me funny and said, We let it fall. Mart piled dry grass on the ground for me and then covered me with giant leaves that had soft fuzz on them, so it was quite cozy. You'll be safe here, she said. Exhausted as I was, it was still impossible to sleep. The trolls snored like thunder, and their stench only got worse through the night. Troll farts, I discovered, are a hundred times smellier than the human kind. <laughs> but it wasn't really the snores or smells that kept me awake. I kept thinking of that pile of magical objects and how the trolls could smell magic. They could smell it on me, and they kept a horde of magical things hidden away from humans. Could it be that my still skin was right here amongst the trolls. So if you remember, Red's grandmother told Rump that he needed to find a stilt skin to help solve his magical tangled mess. And here he is wondering if the stilt skin is with the trolls. Keep thinking about that as I continue reading. Silently, I slipped from beneath my bed of leaves and tiptoed over to the hole. It was covered again. I shoved aside some of the leaves and reached inside. My hand fell on the harp first, but I quickly put that down. If I brought it out, the music would surely wake the trolls. I didn't see how it could help me anyhow. Of course it was magical, but was it a stillskin? Did it grow from magic? I touched the boot and brought it out. It was old and worn, with patches and holes. Just a boot. I wondered what would happen if I put it on. I almost stuck my foot inside when I heard a loud grumble and snort. Slop was sitting in a tree right above the horde. A seven-league boot, he said. Made by a witch and beyond. Take one step in that and you'll be over the mountains. Oh, that would be useful, I said. I could get to yonder in a blink with this boot, and I could run away if more trouble came along. Useful, snorted Slop. For each step, you'll get a horrible itch that will last for seven years. The last chap who wore that boot has been itching for twenty years. We only got the one boot off of him. He's still wearing the other and still itching. I held the boot cautiously away from me. Seven years of itching would surely drive a person mad. Do all these objects cause bad things? I asked. All of them, said Slob. That mirror, for instance, it will tell you or show you whatever you want. My heart leapt. I could ask the mirror my name. It could show me where I could find a still skin. But it will enslave you more and more, said Slob, until all you care about is yourself and the mirror. It makes humans twisted and evil. My heart sank. I did not wish to be twisted and evil, just whole. Carefully, I slid the boot back beneath the leaves, and for a moment I thought I could s smell the magic. As the trolls had said, it did smell sweet, but also slightly rotten, like spoiled fruit. My mind turned back to the apple tree. Those apples never spoiled. They grew from magic. More than anything in this magical horde, it was the apple tree that sounded like a stilt skin. I turned to Slop. So then, that apple tree, have you ever really seen what its magic does? I asked. Of course, and it's a terrible magic. He knocked on his helmet. Bork said that deer was killed by wolves. Well, I never saw wolves. I found the deer dead right by the tree. But you didn't actually see the deer eat the apples. Have you ever known a person to eat them? Slop's face curdled up like sour milk, and he pointed a fat, hairy finger down at me. Now listen here, you. I know there's something strange about you. You got a funny smell, different from all humans. But those apples got a funny smell, too. Trouble. We trolls know it when we smell it. 
Those apples aren't meant to be eaten, so you just stay away, understand? I nodded and backed away from Slop in the horde. I told him good night and pretended to go back to the camp, but when he was out of sight, I slipped into the darkness of the trees. I wandered until I found the apple tree. The apples glowed in the darkness like sparkling jewels growing on the branches. This was absolutely magic, and judging by what the witch had told me, not just any magic, a stilt skin. I could almost smell it. I could feel it in my bones. But according to the trolls, it was a stilt skin that grew from poison. I walked around the tree. I took a stick and threw it against the trunk. I reached out and touched one of the branches and then quickly drew back as though the leaves might burn me. They didn't. Finally, I walked up close and put my hand on the trunk. The tree was so warm, I almost thought I could feel it pulsing with life. I swung up and hoisted myself into the branches. Maybe if I stayed here long enough, the magic would rub off on me and make everything better. I waited for a long time, maybe an hour. I felt nothing. Finally, I reached out and picked an apple. I brought it up to my face. So perfectly smooth, so red. I wondered what Red would say of these apples. She would probably knock the apple from my hand and tell me to leave the magic alone. It would only cause trouble, maybe even death, if the apple really was poison. I didn't want to die, so I let the apple fall to the ground, then swung down from the branches and leaned against the tree trunk. I listened to the deep thrum of the apple tree, which echoed my own heart. Sleep came just as the sky was growing light. Slop poked me awake with his deer horns. I sniffed my way right up to you, he said. You must be more trouble than our whole horde of magical items combined. Slop dragged me back to camp where the rest of the trolls were waking. They grunted and rubbed their eyes and scratched under their hairy arms. Mard was stirring a bubbling pot of sludge with one hand, the other hand full of wriggling worms. You never told us your name. We should know it. I almost told her my name was Robert, but then I thought if trolls had names like Bork and Slop, then Rump couldn't be so bad. Rump, I said. Marg grunted her approval. Finest human name I've ever heard. They always get so romantic and sentimental, she said, as if she were talking about some other creatures and not my own kind. Giving names as if their children were something fancy to eat. Bartholomew, Archibald, Reggie, you know, fish head, or whatever. It's all nonsense. All you need is a sound to distinguish one from the other. She yelled out to two trolls who were just about my size. Gorp! Grot! Out of the stream and into the mud! But what about destiny? I asked. Mard snorted. Less is always more. She threw the worms into the pot and then scooped up a cup and handed it to me. I stared at my moving drink. Do you ever eat anything else? I asked. Sludge is good for you, simple to cook, and it makes you strong and wise. Humans, they make everything complicated, even food. Doesn't life ever get complicated for trolls? I asked. Marge shook her head. When trolls were enslaved by humans, maybe. But we don't worry about a lot of the things humans fuss over. Simple needs make a simple life. Simple. They couldn't possibly understand how complicated things already were for me, but in, both inside and out. It's hard to make simple out of complicated, like trying to make a straight line out of a tangled knot. You don't even know where to start. I drank sludge with the trolls. It wasn't so bad the second time. And then Slob threw a mud ball and it splattered all over Bork's face. Bork threw mud back and then the rust joined in and mud was flying everywhere. I thought that might be a good time for me to get on my way, but I got pelted with mud balls and I couldn't just stand there, so I hurled one back and then Gorp and Grot threw me into a mud puddle. I laughed as they rolled me in the mud and I saw now why they bathed in it. The mud smelled better than they did. Now that I was certain the trolls wouldn't eat him, I brought nothing into the camp. 
He was still on the side of the road eating grass. The troll snorted with delight, especially Bork, who took to him right away. Amazingly, nothing did what Bork wanted. He walked without being pulled. Bork rode on him, and nothing moved. He likes my sounds, said Bork. It makes him feel that we are equals. I guess I would have to start snorting and grunting if I wanted to get anywhere with nothing. But then I had a better idea. You can keep him, I said. I know he's not a goat, but he'll be happy here, and I can travel faster without him. Bork rubbed nothing on the neck and smiled, showing yellow pointy teeth. It is a big trade for a cup of sludge. Well, and for saving me from eating poison apples. Bork grunted, and I took that as a yes. I untied my satchel from nothing, then patted his rump and told him goodbye. He hee-hawed, and I guess he was saying good riddance. I made my goodbyes. Some of the trolls tried to convince me to stay one more night, but I didn't think I could eat any more sludge, and I was so tired I couldn't put up with their snores and smells for another night. Take some sludge for your journey, said Mard, handing me a small jug. Maybe it will help make things a little simpler for you. Oh, thank you, I said, and I swallowed a gag. Th thank you for not eating me. They all grunted and snorted. And even though I knew they were laughing, it still sounded horrible. With my satchel slung over one arm and the sludge in my other hand, I headed down the road toward yonder. I felt a little envious of the trolls and their simple life. My destiny didn't allow for simple. What was behind me and what was ahead of me felt like nothing but snarled knots of complicated.